Hey you guys, let's go ahead and solve this system of equations in three variables. Now when solving a system of equations in three variables, what we need to do is figure out from all three of these which variable we want to eliminate first. And we can move from left to right. We could eliminate the z's first because they look pretty convenient, or even the y's. But I'm just going to go ahead and start with the x's because just to me they look the most convenient. So to do this, what I'm going to do is just add both of these two equations together. So I'd have a negative 2x plus 2x, and there you go. We've eliminated the x's. Uh, and then we got a 4y plus 2y, which give, would give us a 6y. A negative 1z plus 3z would be a positive 2z. And that would be a 6 plus 1, which is 7. So that gives us one equation in two variables. And in order to get another equation in two variables, then all we're going to have to do is uh, we're going to use this top equation for sure. And then we just need to choose one of these other two equations to use in order to eliminate the x. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to go ahead and choose this middle equation. And again, it wouldn't matter which one you chose. You could have chosen the bottom one. But I'm going to use the middle one here. Now what I need from this is for the coefficient of this x here to have the opposite coefficient to this x right here. So since that's a negative 2, what I really need there is a positive 2 right here. So what I'll have to do is multiply the entire equation by 2, which will change the 2y, the negative 1 here, and the negative 4 by a factor of 2. So there we go. We've changed all the coefficients of x, y, and z and the constant here. And then all we got to do is combine the like terms here or add the two equations in columns since they're all set up with x, y's, and z's in the same column. So we have a 2x minus 2x. So again, that eliminates them. And we have a 4y plus 4y, which is an 8y. Negative 2z minus 1z would be a negative 3z. And this equals a negative 8, and that's a positive 6. So plus 6 would give us a negative 2. So we have these two equations now. And uh, we just need to combine these two uh, and eliminate one of the two variables uh, to solve for one of the variables. So that'd be 1 out of 3 at that point. So let's go and write these two together. So there's those two equations. Let's go ahead and solve. Uh, again, it won't matter which one you solve for, which one you choose to eliminate. I'm going to go ahead and choose to eliminate the z's, which will allow me to solve for the y's. So if I had a common factor of 6, uh, that would give us a lowest common factor between the two. But I will have to do some multiplying in here. Let's go ahead and multiply this top equation by... 3, and then we'll multiply this bottom equation by 2. So what that'll do is it'll give us a new system, uh, an equivalent system, where again we're just multiplying all the terms by 3 here, and in this purple equation we're multiplying all the terms by 2. So 3 times 6y would be 18y plus 6z equals 21. And that gives us this bottom equation here, we have uh, 8 times 2y is 16y. Negative 3z times 2 is negative 6z. And a negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. So we can now eliminate those z's. You can see that the 6z creates a zero pair with that negative or minus 6z. So these cancel out. And then we have an 18y, and that's a positive. So we'll add 16y, giving us a 34y equals 21 minus 4 is 17, like this. And to solve for y, we'll just divide by 34 on both sides. And we find that y is a positive 1 half. So now that we have that one value, what we need to do is look at these two equations that we started out with. 6y plus 2z equals 7, and 8y minus 3z equals negative 2, and replace one of the y values with the y value that we found, 1 half. And since I have a little space with this purple one, 
because it doesn't matter which one we choose. I'm going to go ahead and replace this y with 1 half and then solve. So I've gone ahead and replaced it. Then I will go ahead and multiply 8 and 1 half. And from here, I'm just solving for z. So I'll need to add, uh, subtract 4 from both sides. And that gives me a negative 3z equals negative 6. And then I'll divide by negative 3 on both sides and get my answer. And we find that z equals 2. So we have two of the variables. We just need the third one, the x value. And so I'm going to go back up here now to one of the equations that has all three variables and then solve it. So I went ahead and chosen this top equation. Again, that's randomly. I don't have to choose anyone specifically. Uh, but I have chosen this top one. And I'm going to go ahead and replace my y and z values in this equation with y is 1 half and z is 2. So there we go. We went ahead and replaced those. Then we'll go ahead and multiply these two. And we have x plus 1 minus 2 equals negative 4. So we can combine these two. 1 minus 2 is a negative 1. So we have x minus 1 equals negative 4. So what minus 1 is negative 4? And it looks like it's going to be negative 3. We'll just have to add 1 to both sides of the equation. And we find that x is actually a negative 3. So we have all three answers, but uh, there's one thing we're going to want to do before we finish this. We went ahead and used this top equation to solve for all three. Just to make sure that our answer is correct, we really need to go through these two equations and just double check these three values to make sure they give us a true statement. If they give us a true statement, then we know that these three coordinates are on that three-dimensional line. Let's go ahead and do both of those right now. So I'm going to go ahead and start working with the second equation. I have an x, y, and z that I'm going to replace with negative 3, 1 half, and 2 respectively. So I went ahead and replaced the variables and I'll multiply first. I'm just doing the order of operations. And I need 6 plus 2 minus 2 to equal 6. And combining these from left to right addition would give us an 8 minus 2 needs to equal to 6. And 8 minus 2 actually is 6. So this gives us a true statement. We know that that topic, that middle equation rather, checks off. So let's look at that bottom one now. So I have 2x plus 2y plus 3z equals 1. Let's go ahead and replace those variables with the values that we found. All right, then looking at the order of operations, we just need to multiply these three. And then just combining from left to right, I get a negative 5 there. And then combining these two, negative 5 plus 6 is 1, which does equal 1. So this one checks off as well. And now we've used all three of the equations to verify that x is negative 3, y is 1 half, and z is 2. The last thing uh, you may need to do, just depends on your teacher, is to write this as a coordinate triple. So we'd have a negative 3, 1 half, and 2. That would be my final answer right there.